totally freaking screaming right now in my apartment by myself. Okay, and so like, he's like, you know, um, but of course I didn't get a response on how you're doing, duh. Um, um, and then he's like, you know, this obviously is a very sensitive issue in your life and that you hold it so close to you that, you know, nothing else matters. What matters is that people care about other people. A father should care about his daughter and not tell me that I'm going to die of disease, not treat me like a second-class citizen, not try to make me out to be an asshole for not wanting to tell you how I'm doing. I'm tired of telling you how I'm doing and being shot down. Um, and then you apologize for getting me upset. This is a reoccurring theme in every conversation we have ever had. Like, my father can't just apologize and expect it to be uh, gone because it's not gone. He still believes what he believes and I still believe what I believe. And it's not okay. It's not okay to constantly have the scab picked on this wound that he's created in my person. Um, I pulled out a letter that he wrote me when I was 18. I've got highlighted places so it was easy for me to... So it's June, June uh, 18th, 1995, right? He comes to my graduation. And I have my nose pierced and my eyebrow pierced. And you know what that means? That means I'm a drug addict and a filthy whore. So he says, Sweetie, I've got to tell you, I'm still reeling from the shock. The shock of seeing you mutilate your body. The horror of trying to understand what has happened. And we're back to this. I told you that I love you. You're my daughter. But... As your dad, it's difficult for me to understand how radical your appearance is and to understand that that's you. Mind you, when I'm emphasizing in reading this, it's like where he's got caps or something where he's putting emphasis. So when people apply for a job, when you're introduced to someone for the first time, when your appearance is totally different than 98% of the general population, I'm afraid that you'll experience difficulty in being accepted. Because the first impression is the lasting impression. The bottom line, Dad, the bottom line, Michelle, he says, is it's simply not you. 1995, 2008, 13 years later, it's still me. I still have the same nose piercing. I still have the same tattoos on my body. I'm still fighting for equal rights. I'm still trying to earn the respect of the majority as a minority yeah and highlighted in here and he goes on to tell me that because I look this way um, drugs and filthy whore right a minority big big letters minority a minority no wonder people frown sneer and consider you and your thing radical outlandish ridiculous outcast and irresponsible how am I possibly being irresponsible First of all, money doesn't fuel me. So yeah, I'm struggling financially. I have food in my refrigerator. I have a roof over my head. I have my freaking internet and my family that I've created and my mother. And life is wonderful. And I don't need capitalism to reaffirm my status in the world. Like, I don't need that. I don't need white supremacy to reaffirm my status in society. <laughs> Mm. And I certainly don't need your patriarchy. I told you, I told my father, it was the last email. It was so clear, you know. I hope that you mean these three things. I hope that you mean it is not okay to discriminate. I hope that you mean it is not okay to treat people as second-class citizens and that you believe all people deserve equal rights. I hope that you mean that because if you don't mean that, I'm not talking to you ever again. Your little brief thing saying that you ruffled my fetters. And then he says, 
He says, I keep going back like I'm talking to him. I apologize. But I'm not going to talk to him. That's why I'm doing this video. I'm not going to talk to him. Because he says, so, you know, next time we correspond, we'll just not talk about politics because it upsets him. It upsets him. It upsets him. I am the one who's being mistreated by him, by the majority. How can it upset him nearly as much as it upsets me? And then for me to be like, oh, okay, I guess I'll talk to him. I am serious. I demand respect and I will be taken seriously. When I said I will never talk to him again, I will never talk to him again. So, this is the reason I'm blogging. Vlogging. Whatever. <laughs> I have things that to say. And I have real experiences that happen. And I go through the days trying to remain as pure as possible. And this is my purity. This is my reality. And how I am most made like a biased judgmental statement um, that was going to um, implicate the, the fact that I feel like I'm right and he's wrong sort of thing but that's a mentality that I'm trying to not have um, I'm okay with coexisting I'm down with agreeing to disagree but when it hurts people I'm not okay when your beliefs or your opinions hurt other people it is not okay it's not okay people are being mistreated I am being mistreated it's not about coexisting any longer like it's about defending my rights my person I, I, I don't I don't know what else to say I feel like I could rant and rant like I've got all these papers in front of me and conversations that I've had and like rantings where I've taken my pen and I've just written out of anger and frustration all I really want to say is fuck you fuck you fuck you dad I mean you've been married five times you have five children and four of which are adults who do not speak to you. Like my father's adult children, um, all of which, not all of which, but come from different mothers, different marriages, all are not talking to my dad for various reasons. You know, him telling us he loves us because we're his children isn't the love that we need. We need obviously something different. I don't even know what we need. I can't even speak for them. I hardly even know them. I try to keep them informed, um, but I fear that they're going to judge me like my father judges me. Um, and I can't, I can't have that in my life immediately. Like it, it depletes my strength. Um, I'm not going to mourn the person I am. I'm too amazing to stifle my life and create insecurities within myself because important figures in my life refuse to respect me the way I need to, to love me the way I need to be loved. I'm not, I'm not going to let it break me down. I can't. Um... So, I'm going to talk about it to you. <laughs> Thank you for listening.